What's cracking you guys? It's your boy IDK back with another video for I Standard. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about Sound Toys Decapitator. This is a saturation plugin and I'm just going to go over the control panel with you guys and then I'll share some examples with you as well. So let's go ahead, jump inside of Ableton and let's get started. So here we are inside of Ableton. I have an instance of Decapitator opened up. Now I'm just going to quickly go over the plugin control panel and then I'll share some examples with you guys. So to start off, let's begin down below with the five style buttons. Now each of these buttons represent a different saturation algorithm that makes Decapitator a really unique and useful tool. So let's begin with A. A is modeled after the Ampex 350. E is modeled after the Chandler EMI TG channel. N is modeled after the Neve 1057. T is modeled after the Thermionic Culture or the Culture Vulture. And the T represents the triode setting. P is also modeled after the Culture Vulture, but the P represents pentode setting. So now let's focus on the controls up above, starting with drive. So this control operates just like an input control in an analog circuit. The harder you push the signal, the more it'll saturate. And the saturation is based off of which style you've chosen because each style has its own algorithm that Decapitator feeds off of. Next we have low cut and the low cut control is used to remove the low end frequencies before they hit the saturation circuit. And this is really useful to prevent any muddiness that can happen when distorting sounds with a lot of low end frequencies. Next we have tone and the tone is an easy way to adjust the overall color of your sound. So if I were to move the tone knob over to dark, what I'm doing is I'm boosting the low ends while attenuating some of the, the high ends. And if I were to move it over to bright, I would be boosting the high ends while attenuating the low ends. And keep in mind that the low cut and the tone knobs happen before the saturation signal. And this is useful because we can actually tell Decapitator which frequencies we want affected by the distortion. So next we have high cut and the high cut control is placed after the saturation. So depending on the sound you're working with, a certain amount of high cut could be used to remove or tame some of those fizzy frequencies, those high-end fizzy frequencies that's caused by the distortion. So just a quick review, the low cut and the tone happen before the drive signal, and then the high cut happens after the drive signal. And before I forget, we actually have a thump switch, and the thump switch actually adds a few dB of low-end boost right at the low cut frequency. So you want to keep in mind that when you toggle the switch on, you are increasing the amount of low frequencies that hit the saturation circuit. And this can actually add some muddiness to your sound. So I'd say just experiment with it and continue playing with some of these knobs until you find something that suits the track that you're working on. And then next to our high cut knob, we have steep. And what steep does is alters the slope of the high cut filter. So when you switch this on, you're adding a 30 dB octave slope. Now moving up top, we have our output knob. And this is used to control the output level. And as you can see right beside it, we have an auto switch. And this auto switch controls the auto gain feature of the decapitator. And when you switch on auto gain, you're going to automatically turn down the output as you increase the drive level. So if you notice, as I'm turning up the drive, you'll see that the output levels are actually decreasing. Normally, I leave this feature off because I like to adjust these settings myself. But you guys can go ahead and play with it. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Then we have our mix control. And our mix control determines the balance between the original audio and the audio processed by the decapitator. And lastly, we have the punish button. And basically what the punish button does is it adds an extra 20 dB of gain 
to the signal being sent through the decapitator. So when you switch on the punish button, be sure you're prepared because things will get very loud and most certainly distorted. So let's see the decapitator in action. I have this track loaded up, which I'll play for you guys really quick. Alright, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and drop Decapitator on top of my 808. And I'm just going to mess around with the drive and the five style buttons so you guys can have an idea of how the Decapitator is altering our sound or altering the 808. That was style A. Let's move to style E. And if you notice, every time I click on a different style and I have my um, auto gain switched on, you'll see the input or the output, sorry, you'll see the output change. So that was E. Next we'll move on to N. And you can see the output actually changed on that. We'll move to T. And then I'll just move to P. So as you can hear, the decapitator is awesome on bass lines or 808s. We could definitely use this to mold our sound the way we want to. And we can use the decapitator to help our 808s poke out of the mix, especially on smaller speaker systems like laptops or earbuds. So next, let's hear what the decapitator could do to our drum section. I'll go ahead and play the track again for you guys. And what I'll do is I'll load an instance of decapitator on my drum track. And we'll just go ahead and use one of their presets. So I'll go down. What you want to do is you want to click on the top bar here where it says default. And we'll go down and use uh, drum fattener one. can immediately hear the change um, yeah so what I'll do is I'll just lower down the mix a little so here it is bypass and here it is with the decapitator on So not only can you use the decapitator on your bass and 808s, on your drums, but you can also use it on your melodies as well. So I'll solo this out, I'll play the melody on its own, and then we'll drop an instance of decapitator on top of this. And then we'll just start messing around with some of these knobs. So here's the same melody with the decapitator bypassed. And then I'll unbypass it so you guys can hear the difference.
So that wraps up today's video on Sound Toys Decapitator. I'll have a link for you guys down below in the description to where you can purchase your copy of Sound Toys 5 The Bundle. Also, if you found this video helpful or if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Peace.